Welcome to Rotary and serving our community. Today we're going to take a look at Girls Inc. and how that works in partnership with Rotary and what Rotary does to help instill some of the uh, young people, some of the ideas that we have. With us today we have Erica Loza Lopez, hello, hello. and Jessica Wetzel. Hi. Thanks for joining us, by the way. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to start with you, Eric. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do, what do you do and uh, a little bit about your life? Um, actually, I'm coming up to celebrating 33 years with my amazing husband. Um, <laughs> right. We have four children, and I'm actually the operations um, director there at Girls Inc. I've um, been there for 13 years. 13 years? Yes. And you can say Jaime's name, by the way. Oh, if yes, you Jaime. Want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since it. he's probably going to be watching, you know, that'd be good. <laughs> How about you, Jessica? Um, yeah, I am our programs director at Girls Inc. And I've been with the organization for five years now. Um, love it. Worn many hats over the years. And um, I'm very fortunate to be um, with this organization. Um, love Carpinteria. Recently had uh, my first child, um, Phoebe. And yeah, Great. just looking forward to seeing where that journey takes me as well. Sounds good. Now, where did yeah. you come from? Did you uh, Were you a Carpinterian or...? No, um, I came to Carpinteria from Orange County. Um, Orange County. I went to college in Orange County and um, found myself in Carpinteria and have found it to be a wonderful place that I plan on remaining for as long <laughs> as they'll have me. <laughs> good, good. Now, had you had, ever had any plans on becoming uh, an employee or working with Girls, Inc., or is that something that just happened? Um, yeah, you know, I went to school to be an educator, to be a teacher, and so upon coming to Carpinteria, I did want to find work in that field. And so um, Girls, Inc. of Carpinteria... Um, fortuitously came to me in that way. Um, and then I've been really lucky to find a sort of new path for myself um, through this nonprofit um, form of education and this youth development. So um, it's been a wonderful fit for me and my interest. And yeah. Sounds good. Well, yeah. well thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, Erica, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself as far as Rotary. Uh, you are a Rotarian, yes, member of the uh, Carpenter Morning Rotary Club, right? I definitely am. Uh huh. Um, first of all, the reason I actually really like being a part of the Rotarian um, family is because it's completely aligned with me personally, knowing my uh, moral responsibility with the youth, our community, and as a humanitarian. Good, good. And um, that filters down, I would presume, into the workload that you do at Girls, Inc. Um, it does. It aligns very much because uh, being educators, obviously, of the, of the youth, to fulfill all of their dreams and know that there's no barricade unless they put it there, they can break through anything. And I believe that um, Rotary and Girls Inc. in that align very well. Now, what is the age group of uh, the girls that you have in the program? Um, they actually from four years old, you know, pre-K um, wow. or TK is what they're referred to as. So they can be a, um, four years old in the summer, mm -hmm. up to 18, 19 years old, um, high school graduates. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay, perfect. Um, so some of that, I guess with the multiple amount of programs you must have to fit everything within that age group must be uh, a lot of different programs. There is, and um, being the program director, I'm sure Jessica can definitely hone in on a little bit more about the programs. Um, yeah, so we, we have programming all through um, Santa Barbara County and even in Ventura. Um, we serve boys and girls in juvenile justice um, down in Oxnard. Um, and in Carpinteria, our program takes many different um, forms. We serve girls in our after-school program, so we bus them to us and bring them from all the local schools. Um, we serve them in an outreach capacity. We recently have started a literacy outreach program. We go onto the elementary school campuses and provide literacy programming for kindergarten through third grade students. Uh, we also provide outreach programs in our schools. We do a child prevention, uh, child abuse prevention program, um, adolescent pregnancy prevention program, and then our Eureka program is our college-bound program for teen girls um, that really happens everywhere, including the UCSB campus, our campus, a lot of field trips and internships involved with that program. Um, so we serve girls in many different capacities um, throughout the county and Ventura as well. So you see outreach programs, does that mean that you actually go to the schools or... Do they come to you or both? Yeah, we do both. Um, we do both. And recently we found, you know, we, we have our girls on our campus. They come to us um, for our after school program. But we found that in order to reach more girls, we really have to go to where they are and where the families are and where the need is. And so through the schools, we're able to really go and provide more programming on their turf, so to speak, um, to be able to serve more girls um, 
in a different capacity. So that's now, been really this exciting. Be after school or actually during the school school time? Yeah, that's a um, great question. We for our adolescent pregnancy prevention or you know health um, classes, we serve that during the school day. So we actually go into Carpinteria Middle School and serve um, that program in the school day. Similarly, um, the child abuse prevention program, Kid Ability, um, is during the school day. And for literacy, um, we we go after school to the elementary schools right now. But we also have had our staff members go during the school day um, and provide support to teachers and educators there on reaching um, girls that have a specific need during the school day as well. So we've been able to really branch out over the past couple of years. So the curriculum for these uh, during school hour uh -huh. uh, classes, do you actually create those or those, um, do they have to be vetted through the mm -hmm. system programs, things like that? Or? Yeah, um, over the years we have um, used our curriculum that's created nationally. Uh, Girls Inc. is a national nonprofit, um, and we have research-based curricula that comes to us from our national organization um, that's available to us to use. So we use that curricula during the school day, and yes, um, we do have a great partnership with the Carpentry Unified School District, um, and we work with them to hone in on what they need and tailor our curriculum for the needs of our district and our community. Uh, the literacy program, we're part of a national initiative as well, and so part of it um, is created in-house, the curricula, and part of it is um, part of a collaboration with other Girls Inc. affiliates nationwide that are coming together for this new literacy component. Great. Yeah. Um, as far as Rotary, um, how is that tied together with the programs, curriculums that you've seen? Is it something that is focused on or something that just happens? Well, especially like right now that uh, Today, as it happens to be that we've got quite a few Rotarians coming to help with our literacy. They're going to be coming to join the girls and do some reading one-on-one. -on -one. So I think that all of us trying to do and for the youth and bring them up educational and all of... Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I apologize. I think it, it ties in because of the, the partnership that we do have. We all are for the, the youth and the community. So I think it's, it's a very good fit. Good, good. And volunteers, uh, I presume you have quite a few volunteers helping out with these programs. Um, we, we definitely can always use more, that's for sure. <laughs> that's good yes, to know. So we can always use more uh, volunteers. But yes, uh, the volunteers that we do have are very devoted and dedicated and very much appreciated. Good, good. Now, how many uh, students um, do you have actually during the programs, in all the programs at Girls Inc.? Carpentry actually. We have about six to seven hundred all uh, seven <laughs> six or seven hundred girls that we serve mm -hmm. on an annual basis through all our programs. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And is that full time? And when I say full time, is that on a daily basis you get that many coming through or you know, our programs vary uh, based, so certain girls, you know, they do come daily and, and that's the need of their families and the need of um, the girls in order to, you know, to come after school and have a safe, enriching place to be. Um, but also we have girls in the Eureka program, for instance, that um, meet us on a monthly or bi-monthly or, or bi-weekly basis. So they come to different field trips or meetings that we offer that fit with their school schedule or fit with their sports schedule. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then other programs, you know, they meet weekly depending on um, the literacy program, for instance, is twice a week. Um, so it really depends on the community that we're serving in the specific program and also um, the goals and the outcomes that we're looking for in the program as in terms of the level of engagement they have. Let's take a look at some of the programs you have. So mm -hmm. we're going to start with the literacy one. Mm -hmm. Now, Rotary actually has um, what's called basic uh, literacy projects, mm -hmm. and they do this worldwide. So I'm presuming that that would fit well mm -hmm. within what you do. Yeah. Um, the reading, for example, mm -hmm. that's done with the younger ones, uh -huh. I would guess, uh, which age group and which grades? Yeah, um, today, as Erica mentioned, we're having Rotarians come in and do a read around with the girls, and they're gonna be working with our kindergarten and first grade students. Oh, okay. um, our literacy program is really targeted at kindergarten through third grade. Um, up into third grade, students have to learn to read. And when they hit third grade, they need to read to learn. And so we're really see, really focusing on that group of girls um, and students because we know that we need the extra support there so that when they get to that third grade benchmark, they're ready to, um, to read to learn. Um, so our Rotarians that are coming today, they're going to be working with that younger group and not only providing them with a love of reading by showing them books that they brought to the table that they really love, but also um, showing them that community support. You know, there are people here who care about your success and want you to love this and want to show you their love and also want to, you know, support you in meeting those goals you have for yourself when it comes to literacy. So it's been great with the Rotary. Oh, well, that's great. So with volunteers, I'm assuming that unlike school, mm -hmm. you can get more of a one-on-one -on -one training 
so if people could focus mm -hmm. then with specific students and child, children that way. Yeah, most definitely. And we, we do, um, especially with something like reading fluency, for instance, a lot of our girls, um, they need to take the time to understand the words, but then also read it fluently and understand what they mean, um, which takes a lot of practice. And, uh, you know, that means one person sitting there with that girl and not only reading to them, but giving them a safe place to read aloud. And so we have that opportunity with volunteers to give girls that safe person who can help them with that fluency so that they're not only putting the sounds together, but understanding the meaning of those sounds. And so Great. that's where those volunteers really come in for the reading. Sounds good. Now, have you had a chance to actually um, evaluate the success factor of this program, or is it something fairly new? Yeah, um, so we, I'm sorry, um, and <laughs> jump in whenever. Absolutely. Um, but we have, uh, we started this program two years ago, really, on a more um, informal basis, looking at our community, talking with our teachers and educators, and saying, what can we do, and how can we um, be part of this, and what can we do to support our community? And in, starting in January, we were able to actually um, get a large, um, you know, initiative, this national initiative I talked about, where we had more resources in terms of um, measurement. So we have been able to use Dibbles, which is a um, very popular and um, really great tool to measure fluency um, and all of those things that we spoke about with girls. And it's also used in the school district. So we're able to use something that the girls are familiar with, that the teachers are familiar with now, to measure the progress of our girls and then work with our teachers um, to place girls in different intensive programs or you know, see how we can serve them to be the most effective. And so we're just now really starting to use that data, which is really exciting because we hadn't had the capacity before mm -hmm. this new initiative to do so. So oh, it's very that's great. exciting. Now, yeah. how about, um, say, finding, identifying those that have um, mm -hmm. literacy challenges, mm -hmm. learning disabilities, mm -hmm. things like that. I'm presuming that this would find those people quickly. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Definitely helped. Yeah, we're able to use our data and then through a really great partnership with the Carpentry Unified School District, mm -hmm. um, our teachers and educators help us identify girls to say, this girl could use extra support. So when we go out to those outreach programs, we're saying, what students do you have that need extra support that maybe aren't getting it? And how can our program reach them? Um, so it's been great in identifying, it's been great in collaborating, and then also the data the school helps provide us um, has really been making this program much more intentional. That's and, all good. and it's great but, to see because also the teachers um, that we are in that communication with the school district, they're able to call and email mm -hmm. and um, just give that even verbal right there that they're seeing the significant difference. Yeah, That's most definitely. Great. Oh, that mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. Now, how many uh, students would you say you have in this program? Um, so I would say um, we're looking at about 60 right now. 60, wow. Um, next year we're looking to um, get up to probably closer to 80 wow. um, in expanding that. And that includes our outreach site as well as the girls on site. Um, and that's really K through 3. There's even more if you talk about K through 5, which is what our literacy program really is serving on site. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as far as staffing, um, Girls Inc. staffing, how many do you have staffing that specific program? Yeah, um, it really great. Last year, we were able to bring on a literacy coordinator, which is really exciting, um, Gloria Flores, and she does great work with our girls in coordinating and working with the national initiative um, to align our program with what's happening nationally, and then also in collaborating with the schools. Um, we also have a new or outreach coordinator coming on um, starting in the fall, and um, she'll be working to really expand that program and see you know, what can we do um, to serve more girls. So there's the two of them right there that are full-time working on the program, but then we also have a part-time staff, the facilitators on the ground who are working with our girls daily, whether it be through read-alouds, whether it be through literacy games, um, who are that first, you know, line of defense for against right. against these issues that girls face. So, um, yeah, we, we have a small staff, but it's a mighty staff. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking at two full-time and a handful of volunteers to run 60 to 80 students yeah. right now. Yes. And so that is amazing. And because we try to tailor everything for the needs of the girls where right. they are, we're trying to meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely uh, are going to get in there and, and help the girls. And I mean, I know personally myself, mm -hmm. I have taken quite a few yep. of those reading groups. And to see a girl at the first just be very shy and not want to, mm -hmm. and actually almost pretty much buck against it, to turn on and say, can I read next? Can I can I please read more? Wow. Yeah, it's just it's amazing. So this is where the volunteers come in. This is where Rotary could really make a big oh, yeah. impact, a huge difference. Yeah, Great. definitely. Okay, good. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Eureka. Mm -hmm. That's kind of an interesting program. It yeah. sounds like. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, Eureka. We started <laughs> in 2012 um, as part of another national initiative to um, expand college-bound programming um, nationwide, and. Um, 
since 2012, we've been able to bring on five groups of girls. Um, we catch them in their seventh grade year, entering eighth grade, and follow them through the course of our five-year program. Um, so this year, we're lucky enough to have recruited our fifth cohort of girls who are going to be entering. Um, it's a college-bound program that's based on science um, exploration, but a lot of it is personal development. We know that you can't get girls to college and career without giving them the tools to navigate that system. Um, and that comes with you know, leadership skills, that comes with um, you know, healthy risk taking and all of that good stuff with science. So the program really um, starts at UCSB two summers in a row. Um, third year, the girls go ahead and get an externship, that we call it, where they get to work um, in the field with mentors and looking at what that career might look like of their interest. And um, they also have a Washington, D.C. trip. We took five girls to Washington, wow. D.C., five small town girls in the <laughs> subways in D.C. Um, and then, you know, it, it kind of the program grows with the girls depending on their needs um, as they get more toward that college going age. And how many do you have in that program? We're going to be up to 80. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. to just about 80 with this new cohort of girls, which is very exciting. That, that is great. Yeah. Now, do you tie together with some of the uh, colleges, universities? Do they send staffing down to assist you with? identifying what needs to be done? Yeah, you know, we have some great partnerships um, in our community. We work with UCSB um, at the EAOP program, which is an early academic outreach program there um, that works with students, and they really are our champion and advocate on the UCSB campus, helping us secure space, hooking us up with different science departments that provide programming for girls, um, providing workshops of their own on goal setting, um, leadership skills, you know, navigating the college system, scholarships, all of those things. Um, so yeah, we have a great relationship now with UCSB. Um, and then we do work with campuses um, throughout California, actually, to provide girls with tours and different workshops when we go. And even in DC, we take them to, to George Washington. So um, we've really expanded that so the girls get an opportunity to see many campuses and feel at home and ownership of those campuses. Very good. Yeah. Um, do you have any other um, programs in sports, things like that, that are Extracurricular, I would say, instead of the academics portion. Oh yeah, most definitely. I'll let Erica speak to that. She has a, um, a lot of experience. We do. We have year-round um, volleyball sessions and basketball mm -hmm. sessions, and we do try to um, get them through the different age groups. So we'll offer like either um, six-week sessions where they meet twice a week, or they'll mm -hmm. do um, uh, more of a one-week session where they meet three hours a day mm -hmm. for a week. Um, but we do offer it for the different age. Oh, good. Now, is that run by volunteers or part of your staffing also? Um, it's actually through some of the coaches that are local mm -hmm. um, okay. in the area. Good. So they volunteer their time, ideally? <laughs> um, they volunteer a lot of their time, but okay. also good. we do provide a stipend for yeah. a lot oh, of nice. our coaches for okay. some of the stuff. Now, is that uh, any traveling teams, things like that, that would work with that group? We used to have a very strong um, uh, volleyball, club volleyball. Mm -hmm. um, that has kind of a little bit, uh, as we don't have a athletic director at the moment, mm -hmm. we definitely are something that it's on our radar to definitely pick up a little bit more. But right now, we don't have anybody in-house that can really run a program of that magnitude. Mm -hmm. So we definitely uh, rely more on volunteers, volunteers and coaches. Volunteers yes. also. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, tell us a little bit about the structure of Girls in Carpinteria. Is that part of a national branch? Is it something that runs independent? Mm -hmm. And what kind of support do you get from? Well, we are under uh, the large umbrella. As um, uh, Jessica mentioned, Girls Inc. National, there is about 80 affiliates across the nation. Um, but every affiliate is it's on its own. So all the fundraising, everything we do um, for our affiliate is for us by us. Okay, specifically Carpinteria then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's mm -hmm. going to be a heavy load then. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's really great because we have this opportunity to work with um, youth development professionals nationwide when it comes to this curricula that we're talking about, yes. these initiatives that we're talking about, but then operating sort of independently, we have the opportunity to say, what are the needs of Carpinteria and how do we really reach our girls? So it gives us a lot of support, but then also a lot of freedom. Very good. Yeah. Um, we've got a few pictures that were yeah. brought forward to us. First picture shows, uh, it looks like a work day. So let's talk about that and how volunteers mm -hmm. help you out and mm -hmm. kind of help balance the budget there. Uh, <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit about this one, Erica? Um, yes, this is a, a really good uh, work day that we had here that um, we had a, quite a few volunteers. And again, like Jessica mentioned, we are very few, but we are mighty. But mm -hmm. with the community, we are that much more stronger. And um, this, this particular picture that we're talking about here is the Rotary came out and helped us with the whole sandbox and um, yard work that we needed because our facility, you know, it is a little over 20 years old at this <laughs> point, so it needs some TLC and to have community members that care enough to come out and help us with this is 
greatly appreciated. Sounds good. Now, do you do that on a regular basis? Or I know this picture was taken a while ago. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Um, is it, that an annual thing you try and do, or? Uh, that's something, are you, is that something you're offering? Okay. <laughs> We'd love what to I'm take you is five minutes. Rot <laughs> Rotary is there, so. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Definitely want to create that partnership. That's that is something definitely. we definitely would like to look at because, uh, like I said, 20-year-old um, building, we just had a brand new structure, of uh, play structure put in because of the, the wear and tear, the love that it got. Mm -hmm. We had a new uh, play structure put in, but definitely the building and the grounds um, can definitely use a some TLC. Yeah. Sounds good. Perfect. Yeah. And then there's another picture here showing, uh, actually that's myself up on top of this uh, wow. <laughs> scaffolding there, changing lights out. I don't know if that was such a good deal or not. <laughs> Better we you got, than we me. We got a discount on that, I would say. But that was a lot of work on that one. That was a great event, by the way. That one was done for uh, one of the fundraising events. I think mm -hmm. it may have been, uh, what was that one? Maybe a an awards banquet of some sort or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we well, we do have uh, three main events that we do um, over the, the year, but I have to tell you that looking at this picture, and I was looking at it a little earlier, it's definitely in need now. <laughs> That's another one. Definitely. Huh? Like yeah, I guess I shouldn't there, have yeah. brought that one up. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. I mean, we run a small team, yes. so anyone that can come out and even help us change light bulbs at the top of the gym, I mean, those kind of things um, really help us make sure that we can continue to provide these services. So Great. something like that is a wonderful asset to us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, on that note, tell us a little bit about your fundraising. I know you have a big one coming up here shortly. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's our uh, Evening and Bloom that we have normally in October. Um, the last couple of years we had it at Westerly Floral. We are going to have it again, but we're bumping it up a little bit into September of this year. Okay. It's one of our main um, fundraisers that we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is, um, is it an auction or? It is. It's a selling auction. It's a dinner. It's a, it's kind of like a black tie affair. It's a wonderful uh, community event. We hope to see everybody there in the community and we do have a very good um, following on that. And it's, like I said, it's a live and, and silent dinner and it's all the, we usually raise about 400,000 and during all of our events, which really help with all of our programming. Mm -hmm. That's good. By the way, Wesley, that's another uh, Rotary connection, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yope is a member of uh, Rotary. Absolutely. So that's great. Good yeah. for them for helping you out. A few more pictures we have here. Another picture is of a RILA camp, a Rotary Youth Leadership Awards camp in Ojai. And uh, this picture shows a team that went from Girls Inc. They were the first team mm -hmm. that was exclusively selected by Girls Incorporated for that. So mm -hmm. that was a, a great one. Uh, they went on to do great things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Doesn't surprise us. No, and I know it, we've had many girls go through the program over the years. Yes. Um, and it really aligns with our goals and our mission and vision. So it's a great partnership there and able to send girls. Good, good. And I know it's, uh, being a leadership program, one of the girls in that picture actually uh, talked to us, she came to the club meeting, and she said that, quote, before I went, I was shy to talk to anybody, but after Riley Camp, she goes, I found out I had a voice, and I think that's huge, oh. for, especially for leadership, and for her, she went on to uh, compete nationally wow. in different speech programs, so that's amazing for her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The next picture we have is, uh, again, from the Riley Camp, but in another year, and uh, you could probably tell us a little bit about this one, <laughs> Proud Mom here. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Um, the uh, one that's uh, in the white shorts is actually my youngest, um, Ariana. Mm -hmm. And she speaks so highly about her experience with Rella and um, to this day um, talks about the connections that she made with other youth there and how they still connect and still are in communication. And they actually do a check-in to see where people are and, oh, nice. and, and um, holding each other accountable. So they stay connected then. Exactly. That is great. Mm -hmm. Yes. What other leadership programs do you have within Girls Incorporated, Girls Inc.? Um, yes, yeah, so I think that leadership is really a thread through all of our programs, definitely, especially when you're talking about um, programs for, for young women. Um, so we do have a program that's called In Our Own Hands. Um, it's a leadership program um, designed to hook women up with, young girls up with mentors and um, community action projects. And so actually that leads me to Erica. She's run um, a couple of those community action projects through our sort of leadership thread. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. I'm sure you're familiar with making our, our city a smoke-free city. We partnered with the uh, Tobacco Prevention Program and the Santa Barbara County Health Department and made our, our uh, smoke-free city many years ago. But we're actually still in the different phases, and we're just now completing our third phase with them of surveying all the stores on, that do sell tobacco and what other um, healthy products are being sold with it. So we're still very much mm -hmm. um, in line with all of that and 
connecting them with mentors um, and seeing the community action part of it and seeing all these women of also in, in power to be able to mentor them and show them all the different roles and, that we play. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Now I know uh, Rotary has a, a leadership program. Mm -hmm. We were talking about maybe eventually getting that into uh, Girls Inc. Most and definitely. Maybe something that Rotary would be able to help you out with that on that program also. Most definitely. You have so many leaders and so many great examples and programs that would really align with our mission and vision. Sounds Absolutely. good. It sounds yeah. like we need to talk more. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. That, that sounds good. Is there anything that you would like to share with us, something specific, um, that you really found fascinating or award rewarding for you in Girls Inc.? On a personal level or? On a personal just level, those, things, those no, things that stand out. I was just sharing um, with some of uh, my coworkers just this morning that, you know, again, I have four wonderful children and I have three daughters. And a testament to what we do as, as an organization is just seeing the different characteristics in my three daughters and mm -hmm. seeing that one of my daughters went through Girls Inc. since kindergarten and just graduated high school and the significant difference in the the way um, Ariana approaches everything and her voice that she found. Also, mm -hmm. um, I, I know that attributes a lot to her participation with Girls Inc. Mm -hmm. Very good. How about you, Jessica? Um, you know, it's, it's college graduation season, and I've been with Girls Inc. five years, so now I've had the opportunity to see girls that I worked with when I first started who are now graduating college, and I recently heard from one of our graduates. She's graduating from Columbia um, with honors, and um, she sent an email out and just spoke so much about um, what Girls Inc. meant to her through her journey in high school and then how it really prepared her for college, and so I think about her and some of our other alums who are... Um, doing great work and it's really great to be able to see that and see those results in girls and have them come back to us and really want to be part of the organization and continue to value what we, you know, instilled in them. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, one last note we didn't talk about, um, that would be the uh, CEO, the one that runs it. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about her? Mm -hmm. Victoria? Victoria. Mm -hmm. She's uh, a great asset. Mm -hmm. uh, she really knows how to represent us and I love the transparency of the, the organization and She's such a go-getter, and just it's just so aligned with um, the growth and the with the Girls Inc. of National and the the strategic plan. It's just she's an uh, amazing leader. Yeah, I, I've seen that it has changed substantially. It's, it's substantially improved since she's been here. Yeah. So uh, you could definitely attribute a lot of that to her. Most definitely. Um, she seems like she's put a good team together. Also, it's yes. something I have noticed. Mm -hmm. Um, and she couldn't make it today? I guess she's always busy. She's at the Juvenile Justice uh, down <laughs> yeah. in Ventura right now yeah. with uh, another one of our uh, directors down there helping yeah. and um, overseeing that also. Yeah. I value her so much because that really is part of what she does. She's, she's down there with us. You know, She's in with the girls. She knows the girls. She Perfect. knows the program. So it's great seeing her be so hands-on as well. Perfect. Well, thank yeah. you very much for joining us. We oh, sure absolutely. appreciate yeah. that. And again, appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, it's making a huge difference. I know Carpenter is much better for it, and the youth uh, today will be the leaders of tomorrow. Yes, yes. definitely. Thank you for thank having you. us. Thank My pleasure. Thank you. And with that, thank you very much. Take a look at Girls, Inc. and some of the other women's and girls programs that we have out there because it's going to be you that's going to make the difference. Uh, your volunteer time, your support of those programs will definitely make a difference in making our communities better. And with that, thank you. We'll see you next time.